Liberty Fighters Network. 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 Good day, Liberators and fellow South Africans. I haven't made a, a video for, for many months now, and, um, and maybe I've gone on some sort of sabbatical um, concerning all the various court cases that we are dealing that uh, with that's so important not only for the, for South Africans but also uh, for the entire world at the end of the day especially those challenges through the African Union now um, now that might be have been the the, the spark uh, which have made me to to also do this this video and but I think um, that anyone who has got any issue whatsoever with Louis Liebenberg, whether you love him or whether you hate him, um, please just listen to what I'm saying in this video. This is part one. There will be a part two. Um, but in part one specifically, I would like to clarify the relationship between me and Louis Liebenberg for once and for all. Because my name has been used in vain to attack Louis Liebenberg on various occasions. I'm well aware of the fact but I can categorically say that neither Liberty Fighters Network nor myself have any mandate from anyone whatsoever to pursue Louis Liebenberg or Terramax or anyone involved with that company. And, and my, my um, involvement with Louis Liebenberg or the current issue, I believe that or I've, I've seen now and, and, and uh, I will address that in part two. Um, my link was that people got the information some sometime in the end of 2020 i think it was about september 2020 that i was also the one responsible for the uh, liquidation of wealth for you and and that is totally correct and and we cannot deny that because he knows that i was the driving force behind it so if louis liebenberg has has said anything to the contrary um i i will explain why i believe he said so um, but at this time, I need to also say that I have not had any communication whatsoever, one-to-one -one with Louis Liebenberg since the day when our relationship parted, way back in 20, it's, it's about 27, 2007, 2008. We haven't communicated one-to-one -one with one another up till today. So the, the nearest communication I had was at the end of, of 2020 when, when people heard about my, my, my success fighting against Louis Liebenberg. And um, then I jumped on the bandwagon and, and for a, a very short period, a day or two, um, I've communicated on Facebook with someone who appeared to have been Louis Liebenberg. Uh, because I haven't seen him, I believe that it was him because it was Louis Liebenberg's name. And he also knew about what happened in the past. So we were engaging in this quarrel. And I just came to a point to say, you know what, I'm, I don't have the energy. I've got the case against the government uh, fighting the COVID-19 national state of disaster. That's more important for me at that stage. And I've just stopped with, with it. Um, I've uh, last year, September uh, 2022, I've approached um, Mike Bullows. Um, I knew that he had a relationship, or still has, I don't know, a some sort of relationship with, uh, with Louis Liebenberg. And the reason why I've approached him was to see the possibility whether I and Louis Liebenberg can come together and just say, let's, let's, let's agree to disagree. Um, but it's in the interest of someone very important that's mutual between me and him. Coincidentally, he um, called former President Jacob Zuma. Um, I've been, uh, for, for you who don't know, um, Liberty Fighters Network and myself specifically is also the representative, the legal representative for uh, former President Jacob Zuma before the African Commission on Human People's Rights. I've explained the reasons and the whole background on previous videos. Go and have a look um, and, and, and see the reason why I've decided to do that. Because primarily his case of the 29th of June 2021 was used in my case in the appeals in the Supreme Court of Appeal on the 1st of July 2021 to justify my contempt of court. 
So, so I had to attack his court case in order to assist in our court case too, to challenge my contempt of court. So that was, at that point in time, we have been in communication with Jacob Zuma before then, but at that point in time, formally, we've decided to, 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 to come together and fight our common enemy, which is the judicial system and the state of South Africa at this point in time, who are pursuing us um, illegitimately for something that we have not done. And I do know that, that um, the media says uh, that Jacob Zuma is the biggest crook whatsoever, but I've also said, but you know what, people? I've got 2,000 pages of facts, written evidence, that Jacob Zuma is not the evil person that people are saying that he is. The media is controlled by the Scalambos Mafia and, and, and people like that. So, so whatever they are saying, and I've seen now in the media, the same things are happening with Louis Liebenberg and Terramax as well. So at that point in time, I went to, 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 to Mike Barlow to say that, you know what, we've got we need to, at some stage, um, Louis has got a, a, a relationship with former President Jacob Zuma, and, and we've got another one, and, and we should not be seen in any way to attack one another at any point, because it would not be in the interest of our mutual connection, former President Jacob Zuma. So at that point in time, Mike said that um, he would, would communicate with Louis Liebenberg, um, see whether we can come together, but that was just before Louis got married. So Louis was engaged in his marriage um, and, 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 and in his wedding plans. So, so he could not meet with me. And unfortunately, I've tried to communicate with, uh, I've connected with Mike Bolos and he indicated to me, well, he did convey the message over to Louis Liebenberg that we must come together and see how we can, we can sit around the same table and just, just say, okay, let's, let's agree to disagree. And uh, unfortunately, that has never materialized. So, um, I haven't communicated with Louis Liebenberg whatsoever since 2007, 2008, thereabouts, when I left well for you. And let me give you the, the, the background, the real truth about what happened at, at well for you. And before people say that, oh, uh, um, Reino, um, you, you've, you've been in contact with Louis Liebenberg and he has put some, some money underneath your table to, to reveal the truth and what you are saying in, now in part one and, and to part two to follow. People... Everyone knows that we've got a record that we don't want, we don't expect anything in return. I'm not a capitalist, sorry. I don't pursue wealth. I'm happy with the few things I've got in life. And for me, my most valuable assets are my family. As long as I've got my family, I'm happy. Uh, whether we are sitting on a, on a, on a park bench together, um, begging for money to, to, to survive, then I'm happy. Um, I don't pursue, I don't want one thing from Louis Liebenberg or from anyone else. I'm not expecting anything in return. And, and I've always said to people, if you hear something negative about Liberty Fighters Network or myself, I am openly telling people that please go out and, 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 and choose a live podcast or live uh, Facebook feed or a live um, um, YouTube feed or whatever, and put me on the stand before the whole public. And then you ask me those questions that is negative or negative and, and give me the opportunity to explain. And if I am guilty, I will tell anyone who says that I'm guilty and I will then admit that. But at this point in time, it happened once or twice. And, and at this stage, um, I'm, I'm still clean. So I'm, I'm telling anyone who's, 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 who's going to come out to say that somehow Louis Liebenberg and, and Raymond de Beer have aligned one another. No, that, that's totally not so. And I'm not expecting, after I've, I'm revealing what the truth is in part one and part two to follow, um, I'm not expecting me and Louis Liebenberg to sit around the bonfire and sing Kumbaya, my Lord, and, and just forget about... I just want to say that, you know, this is something that's so important and people are using my name in vain to fight him and this must come to an end um, because I'm not involved in any pursuit of him. I don't have the time to have pursued him for, for, for um, your investment problems that you need to sort out with him. But let me go back to the day when me and Louis met for the first time and, and Louis, 
if you hear this message, I think you will totally agree with the truth what I'm going to tell you. There might be one or two aspects that you might not agree with. And please come out there and, and let's, let's just get it out in the open and discuss it. But I'm going to give the truth, the true version of what wealth for you was and how you and I, Louis Liebenberg, got involved with one another. I still remember the first day when Louis Liebenberg and I met. It was in Bakke Square in Makelniak sometime in 2006-2007 odd. Um, sorry, I'm, I'm getting old. Uh, Alzheimer's are starting to creep in, so, so I don't know exactly the dates, but, but it was. It, it happened middle middle of 2000, somewhere there. Or the second part of the middle of 2000. Okay, so, so he and I met for the purpose that my mother at that point in time had 200,000 rand that she wanted to invest in well for you. We saw the newspaper report at advertisement of wealth for you so we decided you know what it's going if you, I, you can get two uh, five percent a month on two hundred thousand rand expected then then uh, why don't we just just invest there and um, i met louis for the purpose of um of giving the two hundred thousand rand to him um when we met there at the bisco in in, in Bokley square um, we immediately clicked. We started talking about any, a, a lot of things. We actually forgot about the 200,000 Rand. But when he came to the 200,000 Rand, he was not interested in actually getting the 200,000 Rand. He was more interested in me coming to work for him. He wanted me to come and work. He, he heard that, that I was a financial advisor at that point in time. And um, I know the background of, of selling. And, and then he said, come and work for me. Um, help me with with this uh, some marketing of of the shares etc and I, I said okay and i started to work in boxburg for wealth for you we we were three in the office uh, two ladies um uh, elderly 50s odd women i'm not going to mention names um and, and the younger younger uh, lady and i actually came in as a threat to especially the older lady because she used to be the the stalwart of louis and the confidant of louis and um and when I came in, I performed much better than she could. Um, I did much better things than she could. And she started to get jealous. Um, so unfortunately, even though I was the one responsible for keeping the database of the investors or the shareholders at that point in time, I was the one doing the marketing, uh, organizing the meetings all over South Africa for Louis to attend. I've even attended many of those meetings myself. So, so I know exactly what Louis said on those meetings. But in any event, there was an internal battle of, like in most other, other companies, there was an, a, a, a fighting for, for status and positions in, in Well For You. Notwithstanding that I became Louis' right-hand person, the one that he could rely on to get things done. Unfortunately, he, he had to come to a point to, to, to say, okay, you know what, I need to be fair, seen as a fair CEO of the company. Um, amongst my employees and um, I, I used to stay or I stayed in, in Pretoria where I still stay um, not at the same place but, but I had to commute between Pretoria and, and, and Boxburg each and every day so sometimes I arrived at work late okay Louis always said you know what I don't mind you do your work and you even stay after hours many times so I don't mind if you come late really um, as long as you do your job it's fine so we had that uh, relationship between one another but then this lady started complaining that uh, I'm arriving late and, and she, why must she always be on time and I can be so that forced Louis into the uncomfortable position to discipline me for coming late he had to show uh, amongst his employees that he's fair and that he treats everyone the same, and he did. But when we got at that disciplinary hearing, it was only uh, me, Louis, and also um, there was an advocate who was the uh, chairperson at that point in time, chosen. And um, when I, I got to the disciplinary hearing with the idea that Louis is going to back me, to say, he confirmed that he has given me the, the permission to, to come late and um, but at that point he turned around and he said no he never gave me that that, that permission so I felt betrayed by Louis Liebenberg so it turned out because he he totally turned around to say uh, he did not give me I later understood uh, or 
now I understand why he said so. But at that time, in, I was young, 30 odd years old. Um, I was uh, I was still pursuing my dreams, and I was the the driving force in the in the administration of of wealth for you. And I felt betrayed because the chairperson made the decision that I was had to be disciplined and. So I, I just became, you know what, I, I can't work under this this pressure that, that I've lost my trust with Louis Liebenberg. And unfortunately, it came to a point where, where things got, got bad in, in well for you. The shareholders did not get their dividends. And many of the people, notwithstanding that I've heard on many of those marketing meetings myself, that Louis told all of them that please don't put all your eggs in one basket don't don't come to me to say that i've taken all your money and then at the end of the day um you you've done that and and something might get get sticky and and wrong in in the administration or the running of the company and you can't get your money and then you're going to say but you've promised me that he never as far as i know he never promised anyone any return and i don't know whether it's the same story in, in Terramax. But I can still remember from those meetings I've attended on the marketing meetings that he never once said that. So um, he always, uh, he was a brilliant, brilliant market, marketing person, salesperson. He could, people, people hung on his, on his, um, on, on every word that he had spoken on, on those meetings. He was brilliant with marketing. He's probably, uh, I've met two brilliant salespeople in my life. Um, he and there's another guy, um, from from aqua ozone but in any case um so he, people people he was a, he was a salesman he, but he never promised as far as i know any specific return but in any event people came to the offer saying that i've invested all my money and i don't get any returns anymore so um so what can you do and and this it, it kind of people didn't realize then that with the marine diamond industry um, at that point in time, it was a very bad year for marine diamond mining because the sea, they, they only had a couple of sea days where they could actually go out and mine. The other days were, were very rough seas and they couldn't go out. And that specific time period, the weather was really bad. So there wasn't any production coming in and there was production. I know for a fact myself that there was indeed production. So at the end of the day, um, it, it turned out that that we as as employees did not get our salary um, and it became very bad at home um, and and we were also um, in, in this predicament and I have one thing is what Louis made a mistake is that there was an overselling of the shares so I I went to Louis and I've told him Louis um, there's only so many boats and companies um, and you, we, we are pushing and pushing and pushing the share. And he just said, just go on. And it became very bad. And um, so, but effectively what he did was, or what well for you did was, they took, because of a lack of production at that point in time, they had to take the proceeds of the capital coming in from the shareholders to pay out dividends. And that was the problem. It was a, a, a company. It, it, because it was a company, you're not allowed to do that. It's not a crime as such to do it. But there was just a simple overselling. At that point in time, Cory Kluter, Dr. Cory Kluter was also the, 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 the uh, chartered accountant for it. And I had communication with Cory many of times just, uh, regarding the finances and everything. He knew that there was an overselling of the of the shares then but from his side as a chartered accountant he never ever stopped it he never stopped it so it became a point whereby the, we were not paid as employees uh, there was this trust issue between me and louis so i've organized a directors meeting one saturday morning and i've told them exact the directors without louis knowledge what was going on and we, they were not aware of um, the actual problems experienced and i've i've then said but but louis doesn't want to listen to me um and at that point in time uh, they've decided that they're going to uh, suspend louis pending an inv internal investigation and then they said that because i know a lot about the administration i would have become the interim 
general manager of well for you The Monday when I got to the office, um, shortly after I've arrived, um, this one lady told me, oh, there's people who want me. And when I got there, it was Louis bodyguard. Um, people who protected him because there were many people who wanted to take him out because of they've invested a lot of money and, and they were pursuing Louis and threatening him and everything. So he got security guards to, to look after him. And they said, well, we were sent by Louis that you are no longer working here. Um, and that's the end of the story. Um, it came out that I, 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 I took my stuff that I could and they escorted me out of the building and uh, they they even pursued me and, and, and followed me all the way up to Pretoria. Uh, when I got, um, uh, I started, it, it was actually a Hollywood type of pursuit um, going through the, um, the, 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 on the, on the highway. And eventually I got the Lenud off ramp and I stopped in front of the police station. I was very upset that these people were following me to my home and I was scared that they're going to do something against me, blah, 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 blah. So that was when I also, um, got my connections. Louis says that he's got a lot of connections, but I, at that point in time, um, was a, you know, also had connections and uh, I communicated the, what, what happened to, 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 to the various connections that I've also had at that point in time. And uh, well, it ended up with uh, me starting the first liquidation against Well For You uh, on the basis that I was not paid. So I'm a creditor of of the, I was a creditor of the of the company, well for you, and um, so during those proceedings, um, Louis came in and and I was paid my salary, so I was no creditor anymore. So I had to withdraw um, the, the the liquidation application at that point in time um, because of the the broken trust and and the burning of bridges between me and Louis Liebenberg at that stage. I informed I had the database obviously of all the connections of all the the, the shareholders. They were as far as I can remember a total of one thousand eight hundred and twelve of them, um, who invested something about hundred and fifty million or so um, at that combined combinedly. And um, so then I connected with the with the shareholders. There were two shareholders I believe. Um, that eventually proceeded with the liquidation. The, he, they used my attorneys, my connections to, to, to achieve that. And eventually, uh, well for you was, 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 was liquidated at that point in time. Um, I remember that I wasn't there the day when the liquidation order was confirmed. Um, it, it was before I was told by my attorneys, a uh, friend of mine, obviously, uh, who, who, who done the, the, the liquidation that, um, Justice Duplessis, I believe, um, also said that that this was a Ponzi scheme or pyramid scheme, and um, he also referred the matter to the national or the uh, director of public prosecutions for investigation into that. Um, but I remember that, that I was told that Louis wanted to stop the liquidation. So it was not that he was sitting back and, okay, let the liquidation go by, um, let, let I then come in and purchase everything at the end of the day for, for one cent in the rand or whatever the case may be. And he wanted to stop it. He came there. He couldn't afford an attorney at that point in time because everyone had, have, have, have run away, like it appears to, to start happening in Terramax as well. But in any case, I'll get to that in part two. So at the end of the day, Louis came to the court on his own and he wanted to, to say and he was apparently crying as I can remember my my attorney friend told me that he was actually very very emotional to say that you cannot uh, liquidate this company yeah so that's the truth what happened um, so sorry I'm actually getting emotional about this now. I'm not happy with what happened. It could have been sorted out in, in other ways. And I think a lot of people have lost. Uh, I know for a fact that um, there was not much left. Um, the Sorry for, um, yeah, the, the shareholders then got, 
you know, if if they ever got ten cents in the rand for what they've invested as as shareholders, um, I think that was a lot. But um, well for you, the doors of well for you got closed. Um, I carried on with my life, and yeah, Louis Liebenberg and I never um, never met again. Um, Now that I'm mature, um, I'm looking back at those days and I'm thinking of what could have happened if we persevered and made well for you a success then. What would have happened if the trust relationship between me and Louis Liebenberg has not bought it. It could have saved thousands of people a lot of agony. Now you also know why um, I'm not, I didn't want to say something because um, in, in some way I, I feel responsible. Um, Sorry, people. Uh, I think it's now time that um, that we fight this together. And um, I think I've seen too much how the Scannon Boss Mafia have ruined our lives. Uh, yeah, I've seen what happened in Well For You, how the Oppenheimers and the Beers Mining have ruined the lives of all those people who invested in, in Well For You. Now is the time. that we stick together and make Terry Max not another well for you. On my clock, I could make myself to do anything I can to save Terry Max from suffering the same fate as well for you and 1,812 other people have suffered. Some of those people have committed suicide because they've lost everything that they owe. They've put, notwithstanding that Louis Liebenberg said, don't put all your money into this. They were greedy and they did that anyway. And I see the same thing happening in Terramax as well. That there are people in, who have invested. The contract that I've seen now is so clear that anyone who really took the effort of reading that contract and who was not greedy with the thought that I can earn more money. It was greed who made them to sign that contract and invest all their monies. That's a, that's a fact. So if I can stop this tragedy that I'm seeing going to happen with Terramax, and this time there's, there's what 40,000 odd people that's going to suffer the same fate as the 1,812 who lost everything. You know, people, the minimum investment in um, Well For You was 2,000 shares. And uh, I had black ladies. You could see that they were, they were poor. 
but then to my office in Boxburg, and you could see that the 2,000 rand that they put on the table was their life savings. I didn't want to accept it, but they said, I want to invest in wealth for you. I'm thinking about that lady. I don't even know her name. She was sitting there. You could see that she was poor. She had a child with her. And she gave 2,000 rand. That was her life savings. To invest in wealth for you. And because of the, the passion and the monopoly, the De Beers, <laughs> I'm a De Beer. De Beers diamonds had on the industry. She lost everything. And she's not the only one. As I've said that I know of, of people who who uh, who lost you know, who committed suicide. I know about people who took packages, they their pension packages, and they became um, they became uh, car gods because they had no other income further. Um, people, yeah. I think that's that. Um, let me just uh, get my grips together and let's start the fight in part two year of God bless, Godspeed, until the next time. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network. Liberty Fighters Network.